In this video, we're going to be writing a simple Python script in Visual Studio Code and then running it in Terminal. Nothing too crazy, but maybe you'll learn a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is download Visual Studio Code. There are, you know, a few different screens that might show up here when you first open up VS Code. We're going to look at each of them. If this is the very first time that you've opened up Visual Studio Code, you're going to see this getting started page and it's going to say, hey, you know, what, what do you want it to look like? And I want to look like a cool hacker, so I'm going to pick the dark theme here. This is only if it's the first time you're opening up VS Code. If it's the second or third time you're opening up VS Code or the fourth or millionth time, you'll get a page that looks like this. So it has a few different options here. You know, you can make a new file, open a file, a couple walkthroughs. It's all fun and good and cool. Um, we want to create a new Python file. So we could just click new file. But if you checked this box at some point and you don't want this getting started welcome page, when you start Visual Studio Code, it might just look like this. In which case, it's still really easy to create a new file. You see right here, it says, hey, hold down the command key and push N. So hold down command, push N, shows up right there. Alternatively, you could also click File, New File, and it will create a new file. So any of those one million ways, I'm going to zoom in a little bit by holding down Command and pressing the plus key. When you create this blank file, it wants us to select a language. What kind of language? Is it PowerShell? Is it Visual Basic? Is it Python? Is it JSON? We actually don't have to select a language because later on you'll see that VS Code is smart enough to know that we are working with a Python file. So I'm just going to click, don't show this again. It'll be fine. Now let's write some Python. Simplest Python in the world is hello world. Pretty boring, pretty simple, but hey, it's fine. Now I need to save this file somewhere on my computer. If I like working hard, putting a lot of effort into things, I can click File, go all the way down to Save, and click Save. I'm going to cancel out of that because that is not the way that I want to save. I'm really lazy. I hate dragging my mouse all the way up here and dragging my mouse all the way down here. What I'm going to use is a shortcut key. If you look to the right of where it says save, it says command key S. So all I really need to do to save this file, I don't need to go to the file menu. I just need to hold down command and push S. And it says, oh, you want to save it? Great, let's save it. It'll be a delight. So I would normally save this in like my development folder or somewhere fancy like that. But honestly, every human being on the world loves to put things on their desktop. So let's just put it on my desktop. So I'll click desktop here, or I'll click desktop on the side here. They end up being in the same place. Uh, and then I'm going to make a new folder. Because, uh, you know, I don't want it mixing with all these screen recordings and these other random files. And I'm going to say Python dash test is what I'm going to call this new folder. Click create, creates this new folder on my desktop, and I'm going to call it hello world.py. Now the .py is very important here. The .py is the way that we say this is a Python file. In some ways this is very important, in some ways this isn't important at all, but the major reason why it's important doesn't have anything to do with actually running uh, Python code or Python files. It's that once I hit save here, I'm going to get a little pop-up that says, hey, do you want to install the recommended extension for Python? And I say, yeah, install them. Seems great. It's going to be working, 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 doing all kinds of fun stuff. Um, this is an official extension from Microsoft, so you know it's a pretty good one. Generally speaking, uh, Visual Studio Code is very popular in the world. It does has, have some downsides, kind of slow, blah, blah, other stuff. The biggest reason why it's good, though, um, is because it is uh, has a lot of extensions, and it's really easy to install extensions compared to something like Sublime Text or something like that. 
Um, let's ignore the things it's asking us to do here until the next video. So I'm just going to close this getting started, close this extension Python. Uh, I can click this little explorer thing back up here. Uh, if we had more open files, hanging out on the extensions tab is not usually that useful. Um, but here we are, we have our file, hello.py. In fact, I could even close this by dragging and dragging and dragging and dragging, and then it disappears. Since we only have one file, we don't really need to look at anything like that. So we have this hello.py file. It is saved on the desktop inside of the Python test folder. You'll notice that once I saved it as a .py file, things started to change colors. This is called syntax highlighting, and it's a really good way to know whether the code you wrote makes sense or not, or whether the, you know, uh, whether, whether Visual Studio Code thinks you did a good job or not. For every single different programming language, there's a different set of colors, a different set of patterns, and it's just, it's the best. Not really useful on a one line uh, program, but we'll be fine. Uh, if this wasn't actually Python, we could click Python down here and then change it to, I don't know, C. We could change it to Objective C Markdown. Um, but honestly, because this is actually Python, uh, we can keep it with Python. And no, I don't want to install any of those recommendations. So we have this hello.py file. We want to run it. How do we run it? A few different ways. There's one ultra secret way where we can run it actually inside of VS Code, but I don't want to show us how to do that yet. We'll do that in another video. We want to actually run it over here in Terminal. If you don't know how to open up Terminal, um, what you need to do is you can click the little search, spotlight search in the top right hand corner. You can search for Terminal and then it'll open right up. So when you want to run a Python script, our script is called hello.py. And so we can usually just type, hey, Python, go run the script hello.py. We hit enter and it says, I don't know what you're talking about. I cannot open this file called hello.py. Doesn't exist, no such file or directory. You say, but I saved it, it's right here. I saved it to my computer. When you run Python hello.py, you need to be in the same place. We need to go into the desktop. We need to go into Python tests. We need to go to the place where hello.py is located. In the same way that if I opened up Finder here, if I opened up Finder, I could say, okay, we want to go to desktop. We want to go to Python test. And there we go, hello.py living right there. So the question is, how do we get to this location using Terminal? There are a few different ways to do it, some fancier than others. Um, the way we're gonna do it is by using the cd command and the ls command. The ls command shows us the files that are in our current location. If I go, Look at this, I say we got applications, movies, music, Creative Cloud files, curriculum, all this stuff. Hey, it's the same as right here. It's all of these files, all of these files, except instead of being in Finder, I'm in Terminal. I'm on the command line. Now, if I were in Terminal, I would double click Desktop in order to go into Desktop. The way that you do that in terminal is cd desktop. That will change your directory into desktop right here. And once again, same way we can look at all of these files that exist on my desktop, I can also do ls here and it will list all of my files that are on my desktop. Now again, we have to go into Python-test, right? Double click Python-test is what we would do if we were in Finder. Instead, I'm gonna say CD Python-test and it will move me into Python-test. You can see where you are usually um, because after it says, hey, here's what the computer is, it'll also say, hey, here's where you're at right now. 
Is that always the case? Not really, but we'll say it is. Now I can run ls again to get a nice list of files. And in the same way, I have hello.py here in Finder. I now have hello.py here in Terminal. I didn't have to do any of this stuff here in Finder, right? I didn't have to click uh, desktop. I didn't have to click Python test. Didn't have to do any of that. If I had a new terminal window, I could just say CD desktop, CD Python test, LS, and you'll see the file right there. The only reason I had Finder open was just so you could see it's the same way. List of files, click a thing. List of files, click a thing. LS, see your files. CD is basically clicking a folder to go into it. Now, when I run LS, I can see hello.py here. So I can do Python hello.py, and then it magically runs and everyone's happy. Or, you know, I could delete that. I could run it again and it would give me a nice error message. And you might say, wait, Soma, how did you do that? That was crazy. And I say, do what? Add an error here? And you say, no, you typed Python hello.py so fast. And I say, oh, that, 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 that. And you're just, your mind is blown. You're so excited at how I did this. I'm going to fix the error because it's driving me crazy. Um, but yeah, how did I do that? Well, if you're on the command line, if you want to run the command you already typed, you just push the up arrow. And so if I keep pushing up, I can find all of the commands that I've already typed. But this is usually helpful where if I type Python hello.py, and then I push up, it'll just be the same thing again. Uh, additionally, if my file name is really, really long, let's do file save as, and I can say, hello, this is a long file.py. Do I wanna type all of that out? Python, hello, this, oh my God, how did I just type that so quickly? Unbelievable, amazing. I use the tab key. If you start to type a file name uh, in terminal, H, I hit tab and it says, okay, I'm just gonna complete as much as I can. Now it knows there's both a hello.py and a hello, this is a long file.py here. So it's like, uh, I don't know what goes next, a dot or a dash. And I say, oh, the dot. And it says, okay, hello.py. I just hit uh, tab again. Or I go here, I hit the dash, tab, auto completes it right there. It's a delight. Um, so there you go. That is how you navigate around a little bit on Terminal and run files from Visual Studio Code. Good luck.